Hello, I'm Catherine Ware, Curator of Photography at the New Mexico Museum of Art. As part of the museum's People to People series, I'm talking today with two artists whose work is featured in the exhibition, Breathtaking. Marietta Elise is a multimedia artist and poet currently based in Albuquerque, and Kim Richardson is a photographer and master printer based in Santa Fe. Welcome, you two. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for here. having us. Yes. <laughs> Hi. Well, yeah, both of you have consistently found inspiration in the natural world and have taken it as the primary subject for your work across a variety of projects and series. And I wonder if each of you would talk about how that came to be such a powerful influence on your lives and on your art. Uh, Marietta, why don't you start us off? Okay, I'll start. Well, I feel very fortunate because I had this incredibly wonderful Italian grandmother and I lived in an apartment house in New Jersey the first 13 years or so of my life and we had no balcony, no garden, but grandma lived close by and she had a wonderful both flower and vegetable garden and it's not like she taught me, but she let me be with her and experience her joy and her passion about growing in the earth. And she let me put my hands in the earth and plant mm. seeds. And that has always stayed with me. I've been so fortunate because I have always had that grounding or that connection. And then of course, with the art, what happened was not only the beauty of our planet and of our world, but also some of the dangers and some of the risks that risky place that the earth is in. And so that became a double theme. It's like, yes, this is beautiful, love it, take care of it. Kim, what would you say? Yeah. Yeah, I'm right there in alignment with Marietta with wanting to take care of it for sure. And, um, you know, I hike every day I'm lucky to live in Santa Fe where we have millions of acres of trails that we can go on. And it's, it's really integral to my art practice that I'm out and I'm working things out. And it's nature is the place where you can ease, come into an ease and um, it points to a natural state of mind. You know, there's uh, when you're in the trees, you have all the oxygen. <laughs> And then you slow down, you leave out big exhales. It's funny because when I'm driving and I see the national Santa Fe National Forest sign, it's just like, ah, everything oh. just is like <laughs> dissolving away <laughs> behind me. Yes. It's just like, great, I'm here. And then, you know, nature's here. It's, it is as it is. You mm -hmm. just have a place to be and it, and it really supports that. And then try to synthesize that into a photograph is really hard, but it takes a lot of practice. Well, yeah, that's an interesting challenge. And we, we can talk a little bit more about that. Um, let's yeah. uh, talk about the work that you each have on view in the exhibition specifically. And of course, for me, it was a challenge to find visual art about breath, something so okay. fundamental, but so elusive. So that was one of the interesting parts of the project. Um, and Kim, I was drawn to your very elemental and almost subjectless photographs of the ocean uh, from, from another, from a body of work that's about something else. Uh, but, but even though the series isn't about breath, I felt like it and, and those particular yeah. images really connected with that on a pretty deep level. What, would you talk a little bit about that work in that series? Yeah, yeah. So uh, as a family, uh, you know, Willie and my husband and our daughter, my mother-in-law, my stepmom, she inherited a place in Sanibel when her parents passed, which was probably like 12 years ago. And so every year from 10 years till now, we would go to Sanibel and it's right on the beach. It's where they got mm -hmm. to build in the 60s where they built really close. <laughs> so it's taken a beating through some hurricanes, but yeah. it's still standing it's there. Mm -hmm. And just as a family, you get to go and 
exhale, you know, we don't do anything, you know, it's like you just lullaby in the beach all day and, you know, just lay around and enjoy just doing nothing really. And that's, that is a wonderful part of what the ocean does for you. It resets you and it has all those negative ions coming off. Mm -hmm. and the ocean itself does provide like 50% of the oxygen for our planet, you know, and it absorbs a ton of carbon dioxide too. And um, yeah, it's this after, you know, waking up at four in the morning, because the light there is so interesting. The island runs, the island runs uh, east, west, not north, south. So it does, the light's different. It's somehow has, it'll ha have a lot of blending where everything looks like the same color. And in these photos that are in the exhibition, they have that where it goes, the pink will reflect from the ocean and everything kind of just seamlessly comes up and you have this seamless experience somehow. You're just mm -hmm. drenched in this one feeling of this inseparable feeling. I don't know how to explain it, but. Um, well, that's one of the things I loved about them was that integration of sky, ocean, and and landscape and land. You know that those were all. It was it was a continu It's a continuum. Um, and right. people, yeah, people will see a picture of that and see what I'm talking about. But it uh, there was a, sort of a sense of unity. Yeah, exactly. And I <laughs> I got to see the exhibition, and it is tranquil, beautiful. It like relieves your blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just felt like, oh, it feels so good. Yes. And in Marietta's work, there's that similarity of the the tone, the tonality. It's subtle yes. in the silk and it comes up and it's very similar in the photographs, yeah. how yeah. you have that tonality. And there's something about being washed in light that blends everything somehow together. And, you know, there, there's this um, really, it's a joyful experience. Mm -hmm. The two of you, your your work is some of the most colorful in the show, uh, and and Marietta, your your pieces are uh, al allied with the beginning of the show, where we really wanted to give a feeling of lightness and uh -huh. air and and movement. Uh -huh. Tell us a little bit about uh, those pieces and uh, their special qualities, and were were those part of the series that you did about air, or were you it just is. exhibiting them with? Yes. Okay, terrific. And uh, uh, let me see, well, th they're called Breath One and Two. So that definitely relates to the <laughs> exhibit. And um, they're photographs that have been printed on Habito silk, which is a very fine silk. And one of the things I've done for years is everywhere I travel and I travel a lot and I've had 17 artist residencies where I'm planted someplace. And I photograph the skies because all around the world, the sky changes. It's translucent or it's very dense or it sometimes feels opaque. And sometimes I see green skies and I go, whoa, and I have to know about that. So, you know, skies are very important to me. And when I decided to do this exhibit about air, which I wanted to do because it's a global issue, there's no fences, no barriers, uh, no walls, we all breathe the air. And so I was showing this in Latvia and I wanted to make that global statement that we're all sharing this air. And, um, so this was part of that series. And what I wanted to do with printing them on silk was that they're kind of interactive, that they move when you move and uh, they change with what's happening in the room with the air conditioner or whatever. And I feel that it engages people, that they feel that they're more uh, connected to it. So, you know, being part of the air and um, of course we breathe the air, which Kim was uh, saying about her work, we inhale and we exhale and the air is there. And, you know, again, I wanted to make the point that there is some um, uh, danger about losing our air quality. And so even though globally we all share the air, that we all also need to be cognizant of being the guardians of her. 
So that's what the work was trying to do. And both of your pieces are also photographs. Is that right? Are they, they yes. both photographs of, of a sky? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's funny that they're so, in a way, they're very literal, even though they look um, very... Yeah. Um, well, that's the way I photograph skies, though. You know, <laughs> I try to just see the color because color is so important in my work because I feel color really uh, conveys memories and moods and a sense of a place. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a very intimate relationship that we have with that air. And, and as you say, there's one air for all, yes. all creatures. Definitely. So it makes sense yeah. to... To care that's for that. why, yeah, that's why we have the trees too, right? So that Absolutely. they can purify the air. And, and then there's so many good um, on Netflix. There's the trees series from Diana Kroger. She made a film, and she Japan. I, I think it was like 20 years ago on the northeast coast. They decimated entire forest on the coast yes. all in one shot, and then. They showed by removing the forest, which is a terrible idea, <laughs> that yes. the ocean became a drought as well because they oh. have a symbiotic, they feed right into each other. So whatever falls off, of dead from the trees yes. goes into the ocean to feed the coral, to feed the ground, mm. to feed it. And they right. got no food and everything turned into sand, like desert. Oh. So, right. so everything is right. inseparable and linked totally. together. And they cl it cleans, it balances it. But yeah, we are in a really precarious state in the Fine. planet. Mm -hmm. Those beautiful seascapes you did, you said uh, you went back a year or two later and it was looked completely different, year. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the next year was the worst red algae bloom uh. since 1840, but it was worse than 1840. It was way worse. They downplay mm -hmm. it. And in Florida, everybody wants a green lawn mm -hmm. with fertilizer. And then we have the citrus farms and the sugar plantations and all of that gets pushed mm -hmm. into the Gulf. And the, uh. they've messed it up really bad through the rivers and the lakes. They just screwed it all up. So everything got, you know, gets pushed into the Gulf and it this algae bloom lives way, 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 way far out into the Gulf. But then once it gets uh, pushed in and it has the food, the fertilizer, it just multiplies like crazy and it takes the oxygen out of the, the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was just waves of death, like eels that I, all these animals I've never seen before because they live in the ocean. <laughs> they don't live on ah. the beach. They were all coming and it was just, it was massive and you couldn't breathe either when you're by the sea, it chokes you. And then, and then you just see puffer fishes and starfishes and a grouper washed up that was like five feet and a with the grouper. huge eyes that lived to be like 50 years old. They said he was about 50 and you know, he didn't make it. Mm. And, and a whale oh. shark washed up like, that's huge, you know. The balance is really important. Yeah. It really is. It really well, let's is. move from the prosaic to uh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the right. philosophical, maybe, of another yeah. connection that I saw in your work, the two of you, and another reason I was interested in getting you together was a sense of spirituality. And that's another ephemeral, uh, immaterial kind of thing. It's it's hard to even uh, talk about well for many of us, but I wonder if you would each uh, address how that word, how you feel that word applies to your work or your work in the show. And uh, Marianne, why don't you get us started on that? Well, I think that um, I don't know about the word spiritual because that means so many different things to many people, but I think of my work as being deep listening work or contemplative or even slow looking um, because uh, and that relates to my meditative practice um, you know I think about throughout the day taking five minutes here and five minutes there just to deep breathe and be quiet and I, so I think that is reflective in my work and uh, the reason I make reductive work is because I don't want my work 
to have objects in it that people can name. Because I think once they start naming things, because that's what they see and they want to give it a name, it takes them away from maybe the core or the essence of what the work is. And so I don't want them distracted. So I think that's a big problem with photography, particularly. Mm. People want to recognize what it's a picture of and then they're done. Right. But that's not what you're doing. No, no, because you pointed out that, you know, there's just sections of the sky that I wanted to get the color and the translucence maybe or whatever I'm looking at. And that's simply it. I want people to reflect on how that makes them feel or how that makes them think. Um, so, you know, Kim, you were talking about interconnection and I think we all are, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the things that I think about a lot in the work is that uh, we are part of the earth. We have the same materials, the same minerals um, that so many living things have, trees and flowers and plants where you have some of that same stuff. And so when I think about that, that is actually a spiritual thought, right? I mean, it's like that interconnectivity that we're all the same. It's like the air, we all breathe it and um, our breath goes out into the air. So we all share something uh, together. And um, I, I just, that's just an important element that I think about a lot in the work. And yeah, and interconnectedness is a good word. And there's this reciprocity, of course, in our yes. in our breath with our breath, um, yes. in terms of what we produce and what the plant world produces that we then consume. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so yeah. true. Yeah, there's this absolutely. poet that said something, and I'm paraphrasing, but he said, "You know, when we die, we actually exhale our last breath, and it goes out into the universe." And I yeah. love that thought, our body ends, but our breath continues. And I just thought, oh, that's so nice. Yeah. yeah. What about Kim, you, Kim? Yeah. yeah, tell us about well, the, the title for your series, particularly is, right, is very right. philosophical. Yes, yes. Well, I, you know, I, my art practice is rooted in a meditation practice that you know, I've been practicing since 1997. I have a, a teacher, Lama Olaini Dahl. He's Danish and his teacher was the 16th Karmapa and that was with the Karmakaju lineage. That's a Tibetan Buddhist lineage. And so it's, it's been a long standing practice and it's one in, you know, in the West we miss we miss these core teachings about understanding the way things are in the world. And Buddha discovered that when he became enlightened and, you know, 2,500 years ago, he understood that there are all the, you know, we mistake ourselves as being solid and real. And actually everything is a play of space. Things come into, they, they come into space. So it's created in space. They play around and then, they dissolve back out again. And so this uh, in nature of impermanence, and that's what this work, the series is about, this a memory from the long dream, because in Tibetan they'll say, during the day it's the long dream and at night it's the short dream mm -hmm. because, because of this impermanent, impermanent nature that we have all these joyful experiences, all kinds of experiences, anything can happen, but you're not caught by them. They are, playing around, but you know that they're not inherently real because they change. There's freedom in the mind because of that. Mm -hmm. And so nothing is static and real. So because we see that in our seasons, we see that in our lives, we see that in our body. We can't say that this is all kin because I have cells and I'm made up of molecules and light and, you know, it's <laughs> all yes. of those things. Yes. And so What's really important is who, what is the awareness? What is aware of awareness? And that kind of picks up with you, Marietta, when you said with the poem that you paraphrased with the breath, you know, when the body is pat finished and then you have the breath, when that breath goes out, it is in Buddhism, we would say it's the awareness. Mm -hmm. So cultivating that breath practice is a lot of 
what is looking out through our eyes, what's listening through our ears, what is that being, what is that awareness, mm -hmm. it's the awareness of the awareness. It's really hard <laughs> to practice, but yes. I mean, it's like we could talk about it and, and right. it's wild in Buddhism because there's so much scholarship. It's like yes. forever. And, you know, right. they, they'll, they'll say you can't define it. You can't define mind like this or like that. Mm -hmm. It's everything. It's both and it's, you know, the minute you point it out as something, they're like, it's not that. Yes. <laughs> yes. You yes. Know. Those are the right. Cohen's so, right? that you have to. Yeah. The Cohen's exactly. Yes. 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 Yeah. So, so that the, series is really about that. Yeah. Yeah. But I just wanted to reflect to Kim that when I look at her photographs, there's a certain stillness. Um, that I really relate to. It's like that pause I was saying that I take throughout the day just to be quiet and your work reflects that to me. Oh, thank you so much, Marietta. That's what I'm trying for. Oh, good. <laughs> trying well, to get that. Yes. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> well, what yeah. I got too from both of your pieces in the show uh, is a sense of deep time and that's time that uh, human beings have only made a cameo appearance in, but yes. that this the system of nature and of the world, which is uh, ever changing, uh, you know, has that long history and um, predates us and precedes us and, and uh, yeah. continues on beyond, beyond our time. Well, for our audience, if uh, any of you would like to learn more about the artists, they can uh, information about them can be found easily online. And I want to thank both of you for this discussion. And we will close by inviting people to see the exhibition Breathtaking at the museum or online. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.